said. The truth about the past. Tarzan was Elsa and Anna's brother. This is fanscription. We're kicking off the new year with a theory that's been floating around for quite a while. This one is going to require some explanation before we get into the story, so let's dive in to its origins. Back in early 2014, after the original Frozen film hit theaters and became one of Disney's biggest hits, the creative team behind the movie hosted an Ask Us Anything thread on Reddit, during which someone asked, quote, where were the king and queen planning to go when they lost their lives out at sea, end quote. Frozen writer and co-director Jennifer Lee answered, quote, a wedding. According to Chris, they didn't die on the boat. They got washed up on a shore in a jungle island. The queen gave birth to a baby boy. They build a treehouse. They get eaten by a leopard, end quote. The Chris Lee was referring to is Frozen co-director Chris Buck. Buck also has a story credit for the film. Lee's description of course sounds exactly like the premise for Disney's Tarzan. Buck was a co-director on that film as well. To me, this obviously read as a joke by Lee, but Disney fans started taking it very seriously. Sudden Rapunzel and Flynn Rider's cameo appearance at Frozen and another theory that the King and Queen sunken ship is the same one from The Little Mermaid, some of these connections were starting to be accepted by more and more people. Buck even gave an interview to MTV in 2017 where he expanded on the idea. Quote, in my little head, Anna and Elsa's brother is Tarzan, but on the other side of that island are surfing penguins to tie in a non-Disney movie Surf's Up. That's my fun little world. I say, whatever people want to believe, go for it. If you want to tie them all together, then do it. That's the spirit of Disney. End quote. Articles began pouring out saying that the theory was confirmed, but as stated there, this wasn't meant to be any official proclamation. It's more of a fun headcanon thing that you could buy into or not. By the time Frozen 2 was ready to be released in 2019, these rumors were put to bed by producer Peter Del Vecco. He told Digital Spy in September of that year, quote, It was on Reddit before he even knew what Reddit was. I can clearly, unequivocally state that Tarzan is not involved in the lineage of Anna and Elsa, end quote. In the sequel, this was confirmed by showing that King Agnar and Queen Aduna were actually on their way to the ancient frozen river onto Holland to search for help in mitigating Elsa's powers when their boat was destroyed. We even see Anna and Elsa find the mangled ship's wreckage, with the latter conjuring up an image of the royals in their final moments. That absolutely killed both this and that Little Mermaid theory dead. Which is why I think it's fair game to give it a go here. I always thought this idea was really interesting, and since I just so happened to write for a show where I theorize how things would have played out if big events in film history took a different turn, adapting this theory into a fuller story sounds like just the kind of thing to take on in our Disney Elseworlds subseries. Now, I have done two Frozen fanscriptions before this. What if Anna was the villain in Frozen, and what if Anna was the villain in Frozen 2? The story I have in mind here can fit in perfectly as the third installment, so for all intents and purposes, consider this Fanscription's Frozen 3. Before you get into this Tarzan-Frozen combo story, make sure you go back and watch those two videos so you're all caught up on the massive changes I made to the first two films. I'll catch you up a little bit as we go along, but a lot of the details will make more sense if you see those two episodes first. Okay, the time has come. What if Tarzan actually was Elsa and Anna's brother? Let's find out. Put 
Put your math hats on, because for this story to make sense and have the older Tarzan we know from the Disney movie involved, there's going to have to be a significant time jump here. During the bulk of the events in the Tarzan film, the character is supposedly about 20 years old. If Tarzan was an infant when his parents were killed, that would make Elsa 18 years older than him and Anna 15 years older. I want to set this story two years after the events of the Tarzan movie. That would make Tarzan 22, Anna 37, and Elsa 40. Because of that time jump, it takes place 16 years after our version of Frozen 2. Make sense? I hope so. Another minor change is setting the initial events of the Tarzan film back a few years to match up with the mid-1840s time period of the Frozen movies. Also, let's just say Tarzan was born a few months after the king and queen survived on the African coast. Queen Aduna was pregnant on the ship's voyage, but wasn't quite showing yet, and her pregnancy was only known to her and her husband. Everything else in the Tarzan movie, their deaths, Jane and the other characters arriving, etc., are the same. At the end of our version of Frozen 2, these characters were in very different places. After being cured of her frozen heart by the sacrifice of Kristoff, killed at the hands of the evil rock troll Bronn, Anna ventured out on Arendelle's peregrination of discovery. In search of new lands and allies, the princess brought a contingent of about a dozen people with her. Elsa encouraged her sister, but remained in Arendelle as the legendary Ice Queen. As for Grand Pobby, Olaf, and most of the other side characters, they stayed in Arendelle as well to aid the queen when need be. We start off the film with the slashing of leaves in a dense jungle. The foliage is cut away to reveal an older Anna, fearlessly leading a few of her people through the wilderness. In the 16 years since the last film, Anna has basically become a rugged explorer. Her original personality is still somewhat intact, but the years of wandering the globe and her own personal tragedies, including the death of Kristoff, have given her a harder edge. She hasn't seen her sister since setting out on her voyage, but thus far has accomplished what she was tasked with. That being spreading the word of her sister's kingdom and establishing relations with other nations. This has proven fruitful, as Arendelle has benefited greatly over the last decade and a half. Anna is kept in the loop of the goings-on at her home through written communications traded back and forth with Elsa a few times a year. She's resisted the urge to return because of the painful memories she endured all those years ago. Currently, Anna's ship sits on the Congolese coast of Africa as she searches the jungle for a rumored cave of diamonds. Her aim is to use them for trade and send as many as possible back to Arendelle. The princess and her three followers are surprised when the healthy green foliage turns dark and burnt, revealing a completely scorched section of the jungle. They walk around in the ruins a bit, seeing what was obviously once a place beaming with life, now reduced to a crisp shell. Anna is confused when she spots what looks like a dilapidated house at the top of a tree. We cut to the group making their way inside to find an abandoned looking interior. Strangely, Anna seems to recognize a horribly weathered wooden suitcase. As she investigates and her companions look about the house, a stealthy figure is seen in a small hole in the roof. Intense green eyes narrow at the intruders as we cut to the title. A prosperous Arendelle is then shown on screen. In its glory, the kingdom looks largely the same, but maybe a bit more protected. In the 16 years since the last film, a few other kingdoms have challenged the legend of the mighty Ice Queen. While these battles were few and far between, Elsa and Arendelle's armies sometimes struggled to beat back any invaders. The 40-year-old queen herself is shown to be happily attending to her tasks, but in private moments, she's a bit melancholy. She reads a freshly delivered telegram from Anna that bursts with adventure and, as usual, no word on if or when she'll return. We cut to a large room in the castle where a gray-haired Kai is leading a royal gathering. Thank you all for attending. I'm sure the queen will arrive shortly. The matter at hand today is, of course... Succession! Across the table is a family of three. The woman, Gretchen, is wife to the dim-witted Gunner, a second cousin of Elsa and her closest living relative in Arendelle. They're in their mid-twenties, with a young son named Galen seated between them. What's the excuse this time, Kai? Is she making another ice sculpture of her sister? <clears throat> Elsa is standing at the entrance to the room, stone-faced. Gretchen's expression drops. The queen takes her place at the head of the table, not breaking eye contact with Gretchen until she speaks to Kai. 
Proceed, Kai. Yes, your majesty. Succession is indeed the root of today's meeting. With Queen Elsa entering her 20th year on the throne, an heir must be named. Princess Anna continues to lead her peregrination overseas, and as of our last communication, does not plan on returning anytime soon. It is the responsibility of this council to choose a successor to the throne of Arendelle by the first of the year. The meeting continues with Gretchen staking her husband's claim to the throne, and with a lack of options, he seems to be the frontrunner. Despite a few budding relationships, Elsa never married. Her responsibility to protect her kingdom always outweighed her own happiness. But now that protecting the future of the kingdom rests on an heir she never produced, she's starting to feel that she's let her family down, especially her parents. We cut to a wooden suitcase opening. It's the same one Anna saw earlier, but looks in pristine shape. King Agnar and Queen Aduna are seen alive and well. They're packing for a trip when a 15-year-old Anna enters. She energetically hugs them both. See you in two weeks. Anna, be careful. The queen cautiously pulls away, holding her stomach. This leads Anna to look inquisitively upon her mother. When Aduna realizes what she's doing, she drops her arms with a guilty expression on her face. The king mirrors his wife's look. Anna is seen slowly putting it together. You're... No. Are you? The king and queen share worried eye contact. This confirms Anna's suspicions. She bursts. I'm gonna be a big sister! Anna, Anna, stop. Why didn't you tell me? Does Elsa know? No one knows. We're going to announce it after we get back from our trip. But until then, this is our little secret. Okay? Our secret. Yes, mother. Don't cause any trouble while we're away. Your father and I will see you soon. Iduna then kisses her daughter on the forehead. We snap back to the present, with Anna in the abandoned treehouse staring at that same suitcase. It's rotted and worn, but the distinct Arendellian designs are still visible. A creak is heard coming from the roof. Anna turns to look, but before she can focus on the origin of the sound, the figure from earlier jumps down and viciously attacks. He's armed with a crude spear made of wood and sharpened stone. Anna fends off his attack with her machete before her guards get involved. His spear is knocked away, but the figure takes all three of them down with brute strength and uncanny agility. Anna stands ready to continue the fight when the figure picks up his spear and steps out from the shadows. This is the big reveal of Tarzan. He looks more brutal than ever, with a short beard growing on his face and a deadly intent in his eyes. But those eyes look strangely familiar to Anna. The two battle for a brief moment, showing off the skills Anna has gained over her years away from Arendelle. Tarzan gets the advantage, but is dogpiled by Anna's guards. They manage to hold him down. Anna points to the suitcase and other familiar items in the treehouse. Where did you get all this? Are you some sort of pirate? Tarzan is defiantly silent as he struggles to free himself. Anna looks in the briefcase and discovers a framed picture of her parents. The glass is shattered and the picture itself is horribly weathered, but she can easily recognize their faces. It can't be. She looks back at Tarzan and the resemblance to her father is unmistakable. Do you know these two? Tarzan stops struggling when he sees the sincere concern in Anna's eyes. A few hours have passed as Tarzan and Anna are in the middle of discussing who they are and how they're related. The language gap can be explained by Anna knowing English, Jane teaching Tarzan multiple languages, or just suspending your disbelief. I don't see that being too big of an issue in an animated Disney film. Tarzan explains that this part of the jungle was burned down by poachers six months ago. He was able to salvage his parents' treehouse, but many of his gorilla family were either killed or moved on to another far-off area. He feels extreme guilt for not being able to defend his adoptive family or homeland, and after the fire, refused to leave the treehouse. With Tarzan's stubbornness and the death of her father weighing heavily on her, Jane Porter left back for England with their newborn daughter. He's been alone ever since. Anna wants to take him back to Arendelle. Tarzan refuses. He wants no part of his sister's kingdom. But when Anna mentions she could help find Jane and his daughter if he joins her, Tarzan agrees. Anna gets word to a few of her men to track down Jane in England. A summons from a princess of the relatively nearby Arendelle will likely draw Porter out. They return to Anna's ship as Tarzan's identity is not revealed to the crew. He's only known as a special guest of the princess. We see an old gray Sven happy to see Anna return from the jungle. He's usually wary of strangers, but recognizes Tarzan's scent as familiar. The two bond quickly to the bafflement of the crew. They're further surprised when Anna announces, Set sail for Arendelle.
That evening, Elsa and Olaf visit the Valley of the Living Rock to seek advice from Grand Pobby. He offers an encouraging word, but before they get too far, loud rumbles, crashes, and cracks are heard coming from underground. The Queen and Olaf rush back to Arendelle with Pobby and a few trolls. She does her best to freeze close any cracks in the streets as people begin to panic. But as quickly as it started, the earthquake stops. Everyone, including Elsa, is perplexed. This is the latest and strongest in a string of recent earthquakes, before which none ever happened in Arendelle. When she mentions this to Pobby, he responds, These may be more than earthquakes. Back inside the castle, Pobby paces back and forth while muttering to himself. The third era is upon us. The third era? You've become too powerful, Elsa. What? You know of the three magical elements, ice, fire, and earth. Well, when one goes unchecked for too long, the other two surge to balance out the realm. We've only seen it happen twice before in all the archives we've kept. But you are a special manifestation, my queen. Never before has such a spirit reigned for so long. While some of these elemental powers can be learned or natural in certain beings, there hasn't been nearly enough magic present around Arendelle to balance out the ice spirit. Every time you've defended the kingdom with your powers, the scales tipped unnaturally one way, and now the realm is righting itself. The earthquake we just suffered was no natural occurrence. They will only get worse until Arendelle is torn apart and you are destroyed. Why wouldn't you tell me this years ago? There was no need. We successfully kept the spirits at bay for years and your powers were required to defend the kingdom. But it seems we're no longer strong enough to hold the elements back. We must find a way to capture the source of these spirits. It can only be done by someone with a natural connection to them. My tribe will attempt to come up with a solution, but until then, only use your powers when absolutely necessary. Out at sea, Anna and Tarzan begin to take to each other. They run into a few short problems on their month-plus boat ride, but they get along quite nicely. Much of it is summarized in a classic Disney song about discovery. Heck, it can hypothetically even be a new Phil Collins song. He'd have to get at least one in there. But this one covers the discovery of one's roots and the discovery of oneself. Anna exemplifies this by telling tales of her adventures while Tarzan goes deeper into his background, often speaking of the love he has for his wife Jane and their daughter Josephine. Anna is nervous about returning home, especially with a long-lost brother, but she knows now is the right time. Meanwhile, Elsa's side of the story involves defending Arendelle from the elemental attacks. She's able to fend them off with the help of Pobby and the rock trolls, but they are getting stronger. Unnatural looking fire is doused by Elsa's ice as the trolls handle most of the earthquakes. She tries not to use her powers, but it's often necessary, both making the situation better and worse. In one of the more thrilling scenes, fire envelops Elsa's old ice palace, destroying many of the creatures there. The uneven balance among the spirits is beginning to throw the entire region into mayhem. In between attacks, Gretchen continuously calls for Elsa's removal as queen, duplicitously citing that she can't protect the kingdom anymore, and the people of Arendelle must come first. Elsa agrees with that last sentiment, but Poppy is confident they can capture the spirits as work continues on his plan. During a small break from the elemental incursions, Anna and Tarzan finally arrive in Arendelle. Needless to say, Elsa meeting a brother she never knew she had is a little more than awkward. His identity is known to just a few people. Add that to finally seeing her sister for the first time in 16 years, and you have one heck of a family reunion. Anna is uncomfortable returning to the site of many personal tribulations. However, there isn't much time to mourn before Elsa and Pobby catch her up on this situation. Tarzan is immediately seen as unworthy of being near the royal family. People openly mock his appearance and ponder who he really is. He's further upset when Anna's people announce they've thus far been unable to locate Jane. Regardless of his lineage, he's a stranger in a foreign land and threatens to leave. The talking snowman, magic, spirits, and monsters understandably overwhelm a simple man who just wants his wife and daughter back. But deep down, he is saddened by seeing the life he missed out on. Envying her brother for quite the opposite, freedom from royal responsibilities, getting to experience a whole different life, and even having a family of his own, Elsa confronts Tarzan the night he tries to leave Arendelle. They have a heart-to-heart -heart under the calm night sky. What were they like? Mother and father? Tarzan solemnly nods. Loving, a bit strict, especially mother. But they were always trying to do the right thing for us. 
The older I get, the more I see that. I... I wish I knew them. Father always wanted a boy. I know they loved you, brother. Tarzan lowers his head in sadness. But you have us now. We're family. I have a family. I... I had a family. Anna told me. You can't blame yourself for... I was a coward. I let them die. My wife and daughter were right to run away. You're not a coward. I've only known you for a day, and I can already tell you that. You'll see your wife and child again, I promise. You're very lucky to have them. Tarzan cautiously asks, Why don't you have... Guess I never had the time. There are a lot of things I haven't had time for. You are the queen. Make time. Elsa and Tarzan share a smile. Anna is seen walking up to Kristoff's grave with Sven and Olaf. She's been avoiding coming back for so long in large part because of this. She weeps at her love's headstone. The hard exterior that Anna has spent the last decade and a half building falls away. Olaf and Sven try to console her. Don't you think Kristoff would be glad you're home, Anna? That's just it. I'm not sure I know where home is anymore, Olaf. I thought I could find it somewhere out there, but... The more I searched, the more lost I became. Maybe you had to leave, then come back to find what you're looking for. Anna almost finds solace in Olaf's words just before the ground begins shaking. They jump on Sven and ride toward the castle. The trio join Elsa, Tarzan, and Pabi as the latter does his best to control the earthquake. Fire rises out of the broken ground in a near hellish visual. Anna and Tarzan guide people to safety as Elsa starts freezing any crack she sees flames shoot up from. But regardless of their effort, when it's over, there is significant damage to Arendelle. This is obviously building to a final cataclysmic event, and it's fast approaching. Poppy believes their last viable course of action is to confront the spirits head on. The next day, they travel well into the forest where the rock trolls can perform a ceremony that summons the spirits. The aim is to trap them inside rare magical gems that are in the tribe's possession. This is risky, but it's their last hope. Even though she tells her siblings to stay behind for their own safety, Anna and Tarzan stand by Elsa and join her. In fact, the whole gang and a large portion of Arendelle's army go with to support their queen. Poppy begins the ceremony, and at first it seems ineffective, but after a moment of silence, the ground starts shaking. Out of the mountainous terrain arises an earth giant. Larger than even Poppy predicted, it roars at the characters below, shaking the surrounding area. The embodiment of the earth spirit is menacing enough when a serpent dragon, entirely made of flames, breaks through the clouds above. The heat can be felt from the ground as the two figures look ready to strike. The gems, now! Another rock troll hands Pobby two gems, one red and one green. He concentrates and with all his willpower, raises them to the sky. White waves illuminate from his stone body as the earth and fire spirits seem to be pulled toward the gems by immense gusting winds. Elsa and the rest of the characters look on in awe as it appears Pobby's plan is working. But in an instant, everything changes. The spirits break free of the magical influence and create an explosion of force that knocks everyone to the ground. They roar in defiance as Poppy is shown off his feet, looking defeated. I failed. The fire spirit leans back and unleashes an explosion of fire toward the fallen troll. But before it can reach him, a wave of ice meets it midair. In a spectacle of red and blue, Elsa is shown defending Poppy. She then lets loose her power like never before. Using every trick she's ever learned and more, Elsa battles the spirits, trying to keep them at bay. The Arendelle army's only function then becomes protecting everyone else from collateral damage. Shaken up, we see Tarzan stand astonished at the display of power. Elsa is shown in a struggle with the fire spirit when the earth giant hits her with a thrown boulder. With Elsa down, the spirits begin to pace toward Arendelle. From the kingdom's perspective, we see these two monsters approaching, ready to destroy. The people of Arendelle again panic in the streets. Tarzan then sees the green gem on the ground and cautiously picks it up. Immediately, green energy emanates from it and passes into Tarzan's body. When he opens his eyes, they display the same jade light. The earth giant stops in his tracks, noticing something. It turns around to see Tarzan walking forward, imbued with power. The giant roars as it's again pulled toward the gem. 
the fire spirit begins its attack on the castle when it too starts being pulled back toward the forest. With her eyes glowing red and the fire stone in her hand, Anna is revealed to be matching her brother's influence on the other spirit. As the earth giant and fire dragon get closer to the siblings, Anna and Tarzan begin to strain. The resistance is almost at a breaking point when Elsa uses her ice powers to slide in front of the spirits. She then conjures the biggest ice blast she's ever produced. The spirits are drawn further from Arendelle as they violently shrink into the gems. Earth cracks around Tarzan as fire surrounds Anna. In that moment, the noise stops, the air calms, and the brother and sister stand the new keepers of the earth and fire elements. They help their older sister to her feet. Elsa looks at them exhausted and in pain, but with a sense of surprise and pride. Pobby and the rest of the characters do the same. We dissolve to sometime soon after. Tarzan, wearing the green gem around his neck, is officially marrying Jane in the Arendellian tradition, but with his own spin, surrounded by nature and his family. Elsa holds her niece, Josephine, and plays with her by making it snow on top of the one-year-old, which the baby finds amusing. Anna stops by with Olaf and Sven and boops Josephine's nose. The red gem is seen hanging off the princess's neck. Tarzan and Jane are officially pronounced man and wife. They join the sisters after and celebrate. With her claim to the throne set back significantly, Gretchen is shown furious before storming off with her husband and son. I was thinking, how about we take a trip? You are the queen. I think I've seen enough of the world, <laughs> but with you guys, I'm sure it'll be a whole new adventure. Jungles? Waterfalls? A romance? Wherever we go, we'll go together. As a family. Tarzan smiles at Elsa and Anna as we rise above Arendelle, showing off the majestic castle as the screen fades to black. And so ends the fanscription Frozen trilogy, if you want to call it that. Incorporating Tarzan into the story was no simple task, but I think the basics are covered here. If this were an actual film, a few connective tissue scenes would need to be added to provide a fully satisfying finale, but I think you get the idea. Tarzan finds a new family by rediscovering his original one, Elsa finally agrees to do more of what she wants with her life, and Anna returns home after healing for 16 years on the open waters of the world. Having Tarzan somehow connecting to the Earth Spirit was my original hook for this story. Him being raised in the jungle was the perfect excuse for his attachment to that element. Anna's experience with Braun the Fire Troll in our Frozen 2 video, along with her fiery pent-up angst and aesthetically red appearance, would draw her to the Fire Spirit pretty easily. Giving Anna that tie-in to the action made me feel like this was well-rounded enough that no one was getting shortchanged, but what do you think? How would you bring Tarzan and Frozen together? Any other Disney theories you want me to take on? Let me know in the comments. As always, make sure you check out our Fanscription podcast feed for audio versions of all the episodes. Thanks for watching and or listening. Now, it's finally time to let this series go and move on to a new story. Next time on Fanscription.